My name is Nastia Nuanes, and I study at Ames Community College and Colorado State University. My major is Horticulture Business Management, and the classes I've taken are Introduction to Horticulture, Greenhouse Management, Agriculture Economics, and Botany. During the summer, I work here at Buttermilk Sky Farms in Fort Collins, Colorado. These are our L-shaped beds that we have. It's a pollinating garden and it attracts bees to visit our vegetable garden. And the fruit that we have here. These pollinating flowers are good for cut flowers. for beauty and aesthetics. Today I'm going to show you how I demonstrate the best way to transplant starts from the ground by using this snapdragon. Antirhinum is a scientific name. These pollinating beds are also a great habitat for birds. I've selected this particular specimen because the length of this is long and it's not too much for cut flowers. Okay. So step number one for transplanting is finding our location. This is a compact bed, but this will be a great addition for our pollinating garden. Okay, so step number one, we're going to prepare the site. So we're going to start by digging out a hole and getting ready for the Snapdragon's new home. The hole should be deep enough so that the, the level of the plant is about an inch beneath the level of this box garden. So you can start by just moving the dirt, soil, I should say, because soil provides nutrients and organic matter for the plant. Okay, and you can kind of test and kind of start to see where the plant will be. So you don't want the plant to be out too far or you don't want the plant to be buried too deep. And snapdragons are not too fussy about how um, far you are above. You just don't want to go too much. So we'll dig a little more here. So um, we have some extra compost and potting soil here that we will um, pack and provide over this. Okay, by amending and adding some compost into this, will help ease the transition shock that the, the soil from the greenhouse plant is already in. Okay, so we're going to carefully we're gonna add some more potting soil in here. And although this is compact, this pollinating garden, the, the compact part of this will provide less weeding to happen. Okay, so we're gonna gently turn this over and loosen the cup that it's in, and then this just pops right out. And as you can see, the roots are bounded together. 
So we're just gonna kind of tease the roots gently and allow them to loosen so that when they're inside, they are ready to receive the extra nutrients from the organic matter and water. Okay, so the plant is set and you'll kind of, with your hands, fix, fix it to be level. You don't want it to be slanted forward or backward or you don't want it to be too squished into these plants. And so we want it nice and straight and level. Okay, so now we're going to backfill with the dirt and the soil from where we dug up from. So we're gonna put the soil that we took out from first around the plant so that it's level within the raised bed. And like I said, we want to have it half an inch to an inch above where the base line of the snapdragon was. So that the, that level where it was in the greenhouse plant, so that that does not dry out. And then we can go back through with some more potting soil and put some around just to make sure that it's nice and steady in his home in their new environment and it's plenty with nutrition for them and then we'll want to pack it in and he's in there and he's ready to okay now it's time to water the snapdragon. So we're gonna take our watering can and we're gonna water this guy in. be a lovely addition to our pollinating garden. The snapdragon flowers are also edible for humans. Okay, so finally, snapdragons benefit from a technique called pinching back. So we're gonna take this first set of snapdragons and we're just gonna pinch the tops off of them by pinching off the tops of these snapdragons allows for the plant to grow other um, flowers so that the plant is more bushy and it will fill in these extra spaces and it um, just allows maximum flowering so it can be a slight delay on the flowering, but it's well worth it. And the particular mix, rocket mix that we have, which we'll place right here, is a great mix for cut flowers because they have a great length. And the bees and other bugs and insects love them. So we're also gonna pinch the first set on the rest of them. And then here shortly, Throughout the summer, we will see beautiful snapdragons. Okay, so. Here is our transplanted snapdragon. The scientific name of Antirhinum. What I would finally like to show you all is some snapdragons that have already been planted here a few years ago. 
Snapdragons are hardy annuals, so throughout the winter, like in Colorado, if they are protected and they have um, support in their roots, then they will come back. Like an example, here are some snapdragons that already came back. They, all of these flowers have came back and they're beautiful and it's just lovely. And I think we also have some snapdragons over here and they come in different colors. This to me looks like a beautiful sunset. The reason why they call snapdragons snapdragons is because you can grab them and pinch them like this. Hmm, these ones aren't don't want to snap. Oh look. Thank you all so much for letting me demonstrate the best way I transplant snapdragons from containers to the ground. Thank you. Have a good day.